Hi everyone, it's Judy and you're welcome to Smartwood series. So it is now official, the much anticipated Galaxy Watch 7 has been announced alongside a higher end Galaxy Watch Ultra. Pre-orders has already started and shipments will commence on the 24th of this month. One of the big questions asked is what is new in the Galaxy Watch 7? In this video, I'll be sharing with you six key differences between the Galaxy Watch 7 and its predecessor. Perhaps this info will help you decide if it is a worthy upgrade. Before we talk about the differences, let's take a look at what is similar to both watches. First, like the Galaxy Watch 6, the Galaxy Watch 7 is available in 40 and 44 mm sizes and each of these is available in Bluetooth and LTE models. Though the Watch 7 is now 0.7 mm thicker than the Watch 6. Secondly, it is the same colorful Super AMOLED display with up to 2000 nits in brightness. The build quality is also the same. Like its predecessor, the Watch 7 has an AMO aluminum frame while the display is protected by a highly scratch resistant safi glass. Interestingly, you can use the Galaxy Watch 6 strap for the Galaxy Watch 7. You also have a touch screen, two physical buttons and a digital rotating bezel for effortless navigation on the Watch 7 just like you have it on the Watch 6. Furthermore, like its predecessor, the Watch 7 is rated 5ATM and IP68 which means it is waterproof up to 50 meters and also dust resistant. In the health tracking department, like the Watch 6, the Watch 7 will track your steps, calories, heart rate, sleep, stress, blood oxygen, ECG, and blood pressure. It also has an inbuilt GPS. Now let's take a look at the differences. The biggest change for me is the improved processor. The performance of the Watch 6, which is powered by a 5 nanometer Exynos W930 chip, is no doubt astounding. However, with the 3 nanometer Exynos W1000 chip in the Watch 7, Samsung claims the Watch 7 will launch apps 2.7 times faster than that of the Watch 6. Another big difference is the storage upgrade. With the Watch 6, you are left with around 7.8 gigabytes after system requirements. But with the Watch 7, you get 32 GB, which means you should have around 24 GB for music and app downloads. This of course is long overdue, but it is still a welcomed development, even though the Apple Watch Series 9 has 64 GB of storage. Furthermore guys, another big improvement is the addition of dual band GPS. This is a feature that has become quite popular in the last few years. Most gaming watches already have this, even lower end watches like the Forerunner 265 have dual band GPS. The single band GPS in the watch sees does a pretty decent job in tracking my location. However, with the L1 and L5 dual band GPS, the watch 7 has a greater location tracking accuracy, especially in difficult terrains. The watch 7 also comes with an improved bioactive sensor. The watch 6 is no doubt a comprehensive activity tracker. It did a pretty decent job in tracking my sleep and heart rate. However, the Watch 7 comes with an improved bioactive sensor which Samsung claims has three times more LED lights for greater health tracking accuracy. In addition, the improved sensor also introduces sleep apnea measurement to the Watch 7 and Ultra. These two are the first glass watches to have this feature. Though the sleep apnea feature will also come to older Galaxy watches like the Galaxy Watch 4, 5, 6 and FE. As a result of the improved sensors in the Watch 7, it will not support wireless charging like older models. This means you won't be able to charge the Watch 7 or Ultra with your Samsung phone. Interestingly, the charger of the Watch 6 can charge the Watch 7 but it is not recommended. It will take a longer time to charge and in this process cause overheating. So it is advised you only use the charger that came with the Watch 7. So guys, 
As a result of these additions, the Watch 7 costs $30 more than the Watch 6. The 40 and 44mm Bluetooth models will retail for $300 and $330 respectively. On the other hand, the LTE models of these two sizes will retail for $350 for the 40mm unit and $380 for the 44mm size. So guys, these are the biggest changes in the Galaxy Watch 7. Beyond these differences, the Watch 7 will ship with the One UI themed Wear OS 5 out of the box. Interestingly, Wear OS 5 will also come to other Galaxy watches which include Galaxy Watch 4, 5, 6, and FE. Samsung has also introduced the Galaxy AI to the new watches. The AI will help give you an energy score. This score is based on your sleep and heart rate data. It is an overview of your body's battery level. Interestingly, energy score will also come to the Galaxy Watch 4, 5, 6, and FE. Though the Galaxy AI requires a Samsung phone, in terms of battery life, the Galaxy Watch 7 packs the same battery capacity as the Galaxy Watch 6. Samsung says you can expect up to 40 hours of battery life with the Watch 7. This is the same battery life as that of the Watch 6. So guys, considering the new additions, do you think the Galaxy Watch 7 is a worthy upgrade? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. I want to know what you think about this. And guys, that is it for this video. If you find this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and if you've not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. Until next time, goodbye.